right, babe. I'm ready. Is that your Christmas sweater? Yeah. Are you for real gonna wear that tonight? Santa Claus? I'm sorry, Die Hard is Die a Christmas Hard. movie. No. Comment below. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie for you guys? Or is it just an action film? Action film. Christmas action film. movie. Action film. No way. Maybe we're in Texas. talking so fast there's so much to do here like golf and the jacuzzis and she's telling me about the town Wednesday afternoon, we're getting ready to leave Crystal Beach and take the ferry over to Galveston. The wind is picking up, there's a storm rolling in. I think we're gonna get some rain later this afternoon, but we should be at the RV park before it hits. Now I wanna give you guys an update on the battery situation. We did lose battery power last night, and that was our trash battery. I don't recommend that anybody runs their battery down to zero. The only reason that we did it was because we knew the battery was trash and we weren't gonna use it anymore. So we did have to hook up the fresh battery that we bought. That being said, I think if you had two batteries hooked in parallel, you would be able to enjoy the beach for two days. We've been here two days and the fresh battery is still topped off. So had we had two good ones, I think we would have been fine. One thing we didn't mention, there are trash cans about every 100 feet down the beach, so you can throw trash away as you get it. And also at the entrance here to the beach, there is a porter potty. So if you happen to fill your black tank, you still have a backup emergency safety net. <laughs> so we gotta go, we're gonna go on the ferry, right? Yes, I think that's the only way. No, I want to go on the ferry. Is, is there a length restriction? No. Oh, it, what was it? 800,000 pounds? Something. 800,000 pounds. <laughs> I'm, I think we're safe then. <laughs> it's a lot. We'll be fine. Yeah, we're gonna get in the fair. But we need to turn off the propane. You gotta remember to turn yeah, it back on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad he mentioned that, I forgot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. navigation say I'm driving through the water.
How'd it go? Good. Do you know where we're going? 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven? Yeah. Uh, they're all pull throughs. There's, she, she was talking so fast, there's so much to do here. Like golf and jacuzzis, and she's telling me about the town. It's very nice. That's cool. The gift shop's pretty cool, so I need. Mean, she tell you where to go? Yeah, I come down here and make a, make a ready. Making gingerbread houses is definitely an outdoor activity. Mine's very well, I get sad. a gingerbread house next year. Your house is melting. Well, it's what? sad because it lost. Sabrina, that's for decoration. <laughs> what? No. Sabrina has the best idea though. She has mommy hold her house together while she eats the frosting. I know. <laughs> That's supposed to hold it together. I know. <laughs> I'm glad you got these for the kids. It's a great activity for the kids. It is. Amazing. <laughs> Just helping them. Alright, so we have Nico's gingerbread house. The house that time forgot. It's the best. <laughs> and then Sabrina's gingerbread house. Subcontracted by Masudo Enterprises. There you go. Yeah. All right, Texas. So it's Christmas Eve. Paul is in there cooking Christmas dinner. I came out to the outside refrigerator. Get a little Christmas cheer. We had a windstorm last night, about 40 mile per hour wind gust. That didn't work out. Those of you who know Latino culture, we celebrate Christmas Eve. We typically get together at somebody's house and have a huge dinner and then ring in Christmas at midnight. So even though we're away, Paul is doing a great job with uh, trying to keep that tradition. So she's inside cooking a huge feast for us tonight. Let's see what Paul is doing inside. Christmas sweater? Yeah. Are you for real gonna wear that tonight? Yeah, it's my Christmas sweater. You can't wear that. Oh. 
Why not? It's so inappropriate. <laughs> it's the only one I brought. You're killing me. I, it's Christmassy. Yes, but not that one. You didn't bring another one? No. Oh my gosh. Look at this. We're in Texas? <laughs> You're kidding me. No way. Baby, we're in Texas. No. Are you for real gonna wear that? Mm -hmm. The hat? No, the sweater. No. I'll lose the hat. I'll okay. lose the hat, I wear the sweater. Okay, alright. Because I have another hat. <laughs> oh my god, are you ever gonna wear that? This is my Christmas hat. Nice, I like it. Can you send that for I a minute? Can, I can send that. Let me see, let me see. I don't want Can you please try? <laughs> Not there. Okay, go to the middle. <laughs> you need to be like this. You have to be like that all night. <laughs> you know what the solution is? Get up in the way I knew you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking sparkling cider. We just stopped and filled up for fuel, and now we're on 10, getting ready to leave Texas. Yesterday, we took a trip to Houston and we actually went to the Houston Space Center and it was okay. The, there were a lot of stuff that was closed because of COVID and we found it a little confusing. Uh, yeah, it was very unorganized. Yeah, they, you just kind of walk in the middle. They don't hand you any maps because of COVID so you don't know really where to go, where the attractions are. There is an app now that they have you download that uh, does give you some information but even the app was a little hard to navigate. So. Um, all the uh, all the rides, all the virtual reality stuff, uh, you have to book in advance on the app. And when we got there, everything was booked out because there's only limited capacity. So the kids really didn't get to do too much. It really had more of a museum feel, just walk around and read stuff. That being said, it was still cool. Uh, the tram ride was really good because we got to go see the Saturn V rocket. I think that was probably the coolest part for yeah. me. Uh, but overall, I think for the four of us, it was about $100 to get in, and I think halfway through, the kids were bored. Yes. Especially since in Galveston, they have a pier with roller coasters and Ferris wheels and everything, and it was a toss-up between doing that or going to the Space Center. So we decided to go to the Space Center, only because we will for sure come back here, and we'll always be able to go to, what is it called, Pleasure Point, Pleasure Pier? Pleasure pier. Yeah, Pleasure yeah, Pier. Yeah. So it was okay, now we're gonna hit the road, and we're gonna see how far we can get. We're not gonna get back to Georgia today. We'll probably, not probably, we'll definitely get definitely back not. tomorrow. Oh, pothole. Oh, it's a big one. Uh, yeah, now we're on I-10 on Texas again. But uh, we're in a boondock tonight. We're gonna see how far we can make it and then hit Georgia tomorrow. Yeah, we're like seven, almost 800 miles away from home, so. And with stops and fill-ups and unfills. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> It's going to be a lot longer. Yeah. just left Texas. So if you are going into Texas or leaving Texas on I-10, man, it's a wild ride. It's not the whole thing though. It's just, it's just, what would you say? Like 30 minutes from yeah. the border. And 
to Texas credit, it looks like they're getting ready to do some major construction, so I don't think the roads will stay that way, but ooh, <coughs> I need to do like a tire check. See all the camera yeah, tires. It's really bad. I don't think it's worse than Ohio, though. I don't think so. I forgot. It's been a while. No. Since okay, this is the thing. The highway, like the 30 minutes we had to travel on 10, that's how the entire Ohio highway was, in Ohio yeah, that's right. I mean, it just was non-stop. This at least is just that 30 minute section and then it gets better. the night last night surprisingly at a flying J so we pulled into a Cracker Barrel about 11:45 last night and we found it on all stays we pulled in there and quickly found out that we couldn't stay there <laughs> there was to be fair there was a sign in the RV parking that said no overnight parking of course we didn't see it even though we parked right next to it because we were too busy examining the parking lot trying to see where we could actually put the rig uh, our saving grace was there was a couple in a class A that were actually packing up and the gentleman came over to me and let me know that they had just gotten kicked out of the parking lot by the police. Now they did call the store manager before they closed and gotten permission from the manager, but I guess the police after hours enforced the no overnight parking Stay rule and kicked them out of the parking lot. So we got back on the highway and we drove probably another 45 minutes to an hour north and found a Flying J. Now, the key here is we use the Allstays app. Had we read the fine print in the Allstays about the Cracker Barrel, we would have seen that they didn't have overnight parking. So always read the fine print in the reviews because a lot of RVers will tell you their experiences. So after learning that, we did find the Flying J on the app and it did say that there were RV spaces for overnight parking. What we liked about it is that it's separate from the truck driver parking. So if you've ever stayed in a rest area or a, a truck stop, you have the big diesel engines running next to you all night if you can find a spot. So they did have different parking for RVs. We ended up parking there for the night and it was our first time at a Flying J and it was actually not bad. I really didn't mind it at all. It was fairly quiet. Um, so overall, for the first time, it was, it was a pretty good experience. So our adventure has finally come to a close. Kind of sad, it's been an amazing adventure. I wanna sincerely thank you guys for following us on this adventure. From our family to yours, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and I hope the new year brings us all prosperity and new adventures. <laughs>